Yeah. There was a time when the church was the steering wheel of the world. Where when the church would go left, the world would follow and go left. Right now, amen, we done got in the back seat, the church. And we done let somebody else take the wheel. The TV has beat the, the, the church out. Media has beat the church out. And so media is stirring and directing the people. I'm not done with you yet. Listen, listen, listen. So where is it stirring us, y'all? Where is, where is the, the Ashkenazi, the devil, stirring the world? Let me just pierce back the veil. Let me just cut it wide open for you so you can see it. Let me show you where they're steering like they call the mindless masses. Let me show you where they're steering like they call the sheeple. That's what they call sheeple. They stir in us to say that, hallelujah, the way God said in the Bible is wrong on every front. They're saying no to traditional marriage. And they're stirring the whole population to homosexuality. And isn't that where it's going? They're stirring us away from wait till your marriage and abstinence. And they're stirring us into fornication and premarital and put off marriage till you're like 50 when you done had 25 to 30 partners and contracted all kind of diseases and have about five kids for three different men. That's when you get married. They're stirring us away, amen, from hallelujah, being faithful. They're stirring us to adultery, have open marriages, you see. They're stirring us away from self-control to murder and anger. They're stirring us away from dressing modest to dressing in immodest way. They're stirring us away from holiness to witchcraft. They're stirring us away from God worship to devil worship. When you see brothers painting their nails black and putting black contacts in their eyes, dressing in all black, brothers going, God think now you know, the, oh, you know something wrong. We black enough, we shouldn't have to put on no more black. When you see that, that's a steering wheel. I know you can't see the hand on the spoon. I'm just trying to show you the waves in the pot. There's a stirring that's going on. And Jen is stirring, is stirring us away from God, you know? And people that done been here, well, I know you, you, you know, you still a young lady, you can't really see. People that been here a little longer, we can see the way it was, and then the way it is. And, and, and those of a prophetic nature can see not only not the way it was, the way it is, but we can see the way it's going and the way it will be. Huh, Brother Sherman? We can, we can see it. All right? There's a stirring that's taking place. They're stirring us, a hey God, away from God and stirring us straight to Lucifer. They're stirring us to a one world religion. They're stirring us to the Antichrist. They're stirring us from creation to evolution. Oh, I'm going to just take my time. They could tell us anything, y'all. Brother Brian, listen, we all know the sky is blue, but you just let them people come out there and tell us, we got this new report in. Though the sky looks blue, because of the pigmentation that's really in the atmosphere and the barometric pressure involved and the hydrogen in the air. It only looks blue to us, but it is really green. And all of the physicists are coming, all the astronomers, the spiritual wickedness in heavenly places, they come out tree and they begin to say, yes, they are absolutely correct. The sky that you think is blue is really green. And there we all go, boy, that's a beautiful green sky out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll tell us anything, and we believe it. Though we know with our eyes, ain't no humans being born from monkeys. Though we know from our eyes, ain't no people walking out the woods, hallelujah, evolution, we, we don't see that. We don't see animals changing from one kind to another kind. Though we see that with our eyes, let me show you the power of stirring. 
They put it on the TV. We hear it in the music. They teach it in the schools. They bombard us with the lie. And when you tell a lie so much, hey God, and so often, hey God, with much frequency, people begin to accept that lie as though it were true. That sky is green. And we did come from monkeys. Your children hear it in that school, at that lab of Lucifer, every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. They could tell us that up is really down. They could tell us that the world is round. When what we see with our eyes is flat. How in the world somebody can tell you something that you see? You see it. And then people can tell you anything. And there we go. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I done bust some heads up in here. I done bust some heads up in here. I ain't scared. Like my brother Darby said, yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said it. It's going to be a busy week this week. Listen to me. Listen to me. They can tell us that bad is good and good is bad. Though the Bible says something is an abomination, we say, look, in the name of love, everybody can do it. You see? You see the power of the media? They can tell us that Satan, which, which that, that's what they're doing. That's what they move into, Miss Jen. They move into that Satan and Lucifer is really good and really God, making shows about him. He the star of the show. The one who took us from our first estate in the garden and brought about every death and disease, who brings about wars, who brings about murder, who took us from our land, amen, put us on slave ships. Now they lifting this dude up. Make us think that Lucifer is God and that God is Lucifer. I got another one for you. They'll take a people who not the people. but who are actually the synagogue of Satan, the seed of the serpent. And that stirring, that, that, that power of persuasion, that propaganda, that agitation, that inciting is so strong, no matter how wicked we see they are, no matter how much they lie, steal, kill, and destroy, no matter how much they really look like the father that gave birth to them, with that stirring, with that media, with that propaganda, we say, we don't believe what we see. We believe what they say. This must be the people. And at the same time, that stirring takes the real people who are the people of God. Who look like the Bible say they look. Woo! <laughs> walk like the Bible say they walk. Talk like the Bible say they talk. Then been through hell and back again like the Bible say that they would be. Hey God! Who got the very oracles of God written in their heart. You're going to take a people like that. Who the real people. And because of stirring, mm, you're going to take the first and make it last. You're going to take the one that he had set his particular affection on and make it the drudgery and, and the, the, uh, the outpouring, the trash of the earth. You're going to take that which God had blessed and say, whosoever blessed you, mm, I will bless. Hey, God. And you're going to make his name a byword. I'm talking about a stirring. I'm trying to show you that we live in a day of strong delusion. We living in these last days. Don't trust what you see and don't trust what you hear. You got to examine and research everything. You got to question everything. Because the prince of the power of the air, amen, got a tight grip on the world. And he playing the world, amen, like Geppetto play Pinocchio. You understand what I'm saying? He the puppet master. But right now God is waking us up. 
And we down here and we can see the puppets, but we can see more than the puppets. We can see the strings now. And we looking up and we not only see the strings, we see the hands behind it now. He revealing to us who's stirring up the people. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. Let me expose it. They'll tell you, amen, that the world is overpopulated. That we don't have enough space on the planet. But why in the world when I drive on my way to Texas, I see land that I can't see the end of? Why when I'm riding down here in Louisiana, I see, I, you know, why, how in the world I'm going to believe what they say when my eyes telling me something else? How in the world they going to say we overpopulated and, and that's their reason for killing off folk? You see, that's their reason for purging folk. And they put that message in the movie because they're stirring you. We need to kill a bunch of people. That's, that's the message that they stir. That's, God would never say that. Only the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. Listen to me good. Now listen to me. We overpopulate. There's not enough food. Oh, really? You see, because wherever I see empty land, you know what I really see? Food. <laughs> hey, because food come out the land. How in the world there's no food? And we can ride in big sky country and see acres, hundreds, thousands of acres. How in the world there's no food, not enough food? All you got to do is put the seed in the ground. God going to do the rest. He going to cause the increase. But you're lying to us. You're stirring us up even though my eyes telling me something else. Stop believing them people. Stop believing a lie. You know overpopulation. Ain't no lack of food. They got enough food to feed everybody on the earth twice, I'm telling you. They only got starving people because the elite wants starving people. They got food in storage. You understand what I'm saying? The FDA giving money to farmers not to grow food. Listen to me. Don't believe them people. And people just like their father. I'm talking about the Ashkenazis. I'm not talking about our European Christian brothers. I'm not talking about our Latino brothers. I'm not talking about our Asian brothers. I'm talking about the Ashkenazis. They like their father. They liars. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. I'm serious about this. Don't let nobody stir you up. And I went on a global, national level, but it even can happen in the church. When somebody come to you and tell you stuff to stir you up, don't let nobody stir you up. The simple believe it every word, but the prudent look it well into his ways. Come on, give God some glory, amen. Woo-woo! All right, listen, our second point. Y'all don't forgot the lights was off now, huh? Look at y'all sitting there comfortable. Praise him. That's how we're going to be when we restore. You're going to forget. The blessing going to be so great on Israel, you're going to forget the days of affliction. That's, he going to give you double for your trouble. Let's talk about false witnesses. Somebody say false witnesses. So they stirred up the people, the Bible tells us. Amen. In verse 12, and they stirred up the people, the elders, the scribes, and came upon them and caught him. So they arrested Stephen after the secret slander, after them stirring up the people, and they brought him to the council. They brought him to uh, the court, so to speak. Verse 13, and they set up false witnesses, which said, this man ceased not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. All right. So, yeah, they arrest Stephen. They bring up false witnesses to testify against him. Let me talk with you about this false witness, all right, and what it is. A false witness, amen, is somebody who does one or all of these three things, okay? Number one, they witness him to what is false, but they are under oath. You know, when you go to court, they say, do you swear to tell the whole truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and swear or affirm. And so, so you under oath, 
whether in front of a court, a notary, or whatever, you on the oath, all right, and you go there and you lie, we call it perjury, that's a false witness, you see. Secondly, when you swear, you're not in court no more, this is just everyday life. When you swear that something is true and it's not true, that's a false witness. And you know how we used to do it, all right? When we wanted to make sure somebody was believing our lie, yeah. we would say, I put that on my mama grave. I, you know, now your poor mama, still alive, ain't even paid for her, her place yet, her tomb yet, and you already putting stuff on there. You know, or worse than I put that on my mama's grave. Y'all even go as far as say, I swear to, yeah, yeah, y'all are say, yeah. That's a false witness. And we got people in there, you say, but you still swear. Man. Let me enlighten you here for a second. All right? Christians don't swear. All right? Jesus gave us in his word, he said, listen, that was all right for the Old Testament. But y'all Hebrews took that out. Y'all swear on everything. They began to swear on the temple, swear on the money that's at the temple, swear on heaven, swear on earth. You know what I'm saying? And Jesus said, listen, stop swearing. He said, yes, let, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. That's good enough. You just tell the truth. You don't need to swear to nothing. You know, most of the time the people that's doing the most swearing are the ones that's doing the most lying. All right? And so when we begin to swear, that's a false witness. All right? Let me give you another one. Regular, everyday, ordinary lying falls into this category of being a false witness. When you lie, hey, and tell something that's not true, you are a false witness. And it don't matter if you're talking to your children. It don't matter, amen, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, people lie to their children a lot. We lie to our children so much and we think like it's cool, like, you know, instead of telling them a tough word that you can't have this in the store, we lie to them. Instead of being a parent, instead of a friend, we won't say mom ain't got no money. Now they're going to watch you pull out some money at the register. Mom ain't got no money. Don't say that. In fact, when you say you ain't got no money, you're speaking death on your finances anyway. You ain't got no money. What, you, what are you saying? You never, you, you. Mama, I want this. No. No. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. No. You see, because as they watch us lie, they become liars. Yeah. Stop lying to your children. Stop lying to your children. Don't lie to them. Tell them the truth. You know, I'm trying to protect them. No, you ain't protecting them. Tell them the truth. Lying includes black lies. I guess when black people lie, that's a black lie. <laughs> lying includes black lies, white lies, green lies, blue lies. Everything that's a lie is a lie. And that's a false witness. All right? Let me tell you what else. Exaggerations, that's a lie. You see what I'm saying? And we do it all the time. Be three people in the audience. A hundred people was that. And preachers the worst at it. You know what I'm saying? You know, I done did that before. My wife got real mean. Wait up, boy. You know, praise God for her. But exaggerations are a lie. Why? Because with exaggerations, we deceive people. You know? It's a lie. When we argue with our spouse, you know what I'm saying? You never do that. You ne that's a lie. That's a lie. Stop lying. That's a false witness. You know? That's a lie. You know? So exaggerations, man, that's not good. You know, we, we, as Christians, we need to learn how to, how to say it like it is. All right? Say it like it is. Don't embellish it. You know? Now, if you're clowning and you're cutting up like we do around here, you know, make sure the people know you're clowning. We can have a sense of humor. All right? But lying is when you intentionally deceive somebody 
and you want them to believe what you're saying with the intention of not coming back and clearing this thing up. You see? All right? Y'all still up on that? All right, North Carolina, Negro land people, y'all still up? Because if y'all still up, after riding that bus so long, North Carolina people, y'all got to get up, walk around, just walk around. Do y'all know they just got off that bus? Some of them didn't even go home. No, well, did y'all go home? Bro, Steve, did you get to? Come on, give God some glory. Come on, give God some glory. Woo! Y'all want to leave now? Y'all can leave earlier. Hey! hey! Lord bless y'all. So God in his word, hallelujah, he, he, he thought that line was so important. He made it one of his ten commandments. God decided, amen, I got 10 top, I got, I got a top 10 list of laws that I want to make sure the people know. And one of his top 10 is thou shalt not bear false witness. That's how important it is to him. That's how important it is to him. Pastor, why are you preaching this? Because a lot of Christians still lie. Right? In Leviticus 19.11, speaking directly to the Hebrews, this is what God says to the Hebrews. He says, you shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie. Look what he says, one to another. It, don't lie to nobody, but it's especially good. Don't lie to your people. Don't lie to one another. And as a Hebrew, the Christians are engrafted in to the tree don't lie to people that's in Christ you see don't lie don't lie don't do that you know oh no 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 we're gonna get all of this we're gonna get all of this pastor what you're trying to tell me I'm trying to tell you that God hates lying he hates it he hates it all right why how do you know he hates it Proverbs 6 and 16 these six things doth the Lord hate, and seven are an abomination unto him. Verse 17 gives us the six things. So listen, I told you that line made the top ten. Now I'm telling you it's making the top six. He says out of six things the Lord hates, look what he says. Number one, a proud look. Now, on number two on the list, after pride, which was the initial sin of Lucifer, the second sin he hates is a lying tongue. A lying tongue. And when you understand how much God hates that, look at verse 19. In the top six list of the things that God hates, he says a lying tongue is number two. It's only six sins, but hey, God, I hate a lying tongue. And let me tell you what else I hate in verse 19. Uh, guess what else I hate? A false witness that speaketh lies. Now, Sean, there's only six things he hates, and lying takes two slots. What I'm trying to tell you is not only in the top ten, it's not in the top six, it's in the top five. Pastor, I thought a sin was a sin. Yeah, in regards to salvation and the blood of Jesus. Yeah, what can wash away any sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. But God does have a way of despising some sins more than others. Don't you ever get that twisted now. Don't you ever get that twisted Get a balance on that. Get a balance on that. All right? Get a balance on that. All right? All right. Proverbs 12 and 22. We can tell the sins that God particularly find grievous to him. He puts a word on it. He calls it an abomination. 
Anytime you see that connected with a particular type of activity, you know that God has a special place in his heart and in hell for that particular course of action. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Now, you can let the media stir you how it wants. But what the media likes to do is glorify the very things that God hates the most mm. get under his skin not that he won't forgive it not that he won't save through it but it, these things particularly get under his skin hey God listen what he says lying lips are an abomination what does that word abomination mean it means that it's detestable to God he want to throw up when he see it it's reprehensible meaning he want to punish when it happens it's disgusting to God he want to turn his back on it. It's repulsive to him. It's, it's like he's allergic to it. He don't want to be nowhere around it. He finds it repugnant, lying. He finds it loathsome. He abhors lying. We get a glimpse of how God feels about lying, amen, in the book of Acts, chapter 6, or chapter 5, rather. We just went through it. Who knows the name of the people who lied to the face of Almighty God? Ananias and Sapphira, you get a taste of what he feel about lying. In Acts 5 and 3, Peter looks at Ananias, he's saying, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? In another verse, he tells us in verse 4, thou hast not lied to men, but unto God. And the Bible says, and hearing these words fall down, Ananias, he did what? He gave up the ghost. God took his spirit right from him. Don't you lie to me, son. I take you home right now. And great fear came on all of them that heard these things. God hates lying a false witness. Don't you ever be a liar, saints. Don't you ever let it proceed out your mouth. You do whatever you can to speak the truth in love. You tell people the truth. Amen. Listen to me good. God hates lying so much that in New Jerusalem, where you got 12 gates named after the 12 tribes of Israel, <laughs> where you got 12 foundations named after the 12 apostles, where you got streets of gold and gates of pearl, hallelujah. They got everything that's good in Zion, the new Jerusalem. But guess what, what won't be in Zion? Lion ain't going to be in Zion. Lion ain't going to be there. Uh-uh. Look at Revelations 21, 27. And there shall in no wise enter into the city, the new Jerusalem, anything. Somebody say anything. Anything that defiles, neither whatsoever work it. What? What? What does God not want in there? Anything that work it, what? Abomination. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I don't care what the media tell you. It's not going to happen. The sins that he called abomination, it's not going to be in there. What else is not going to be in there? Or he that make it a what? A lie. You see? You see? Let me give it to you clear. Come on, let me, let me drive this word home to you. Amen. It's going to be a week of honesty for you this week. It's going to be, it's going to be a month of honesty. It's going to be a year of honesty. It's going to be a lifetime of honesty for you. Because when you learn how your God feel about the things that come out of our mouth. And he listening. He listening. He say every idle word going to be judged. He listening. All right. Because some of y'all think that a little white lie, a little, you know, that that's good. That's good with men, y'all. That's not good with God. Let me tell you what God says about liars in Revelations 21.8. He tells us this. This is good for us. This is good for us. But the fearful, in 21.8, if you can get me that, the unbelieving, the abominable. Look at that word again. Look at that word. Everything that God finds disgusting, everything that he finds uh, reprehensible, the abominable. Look what he says, murderers. And look what else he says, 
whoremongers. Now, a lot of times we want to get on people that are sleeping with the same gender. We want to be hard on uh, men that are sleeping with men and women that are sleeping with women. We want to be harder on them and say, huh, they're going to hell. When the very one that's saying they're going to hell got five women on the side. Homeboy, hold on now. Hold on, player. Hold on. Guess who else ain't going to be in the city? Guess who else ain't going to be in the New Jerusalem? All right? No whoremongers. You see? I remember eating lunch with Deacon Hill one day. Deacon Hill says his, 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 either his mom or his grandmother, you know, told him that when he was, when, when he was coming up. You know, it was a word from a, a woman of God. Don't you be no, no whoremonger. You see, that's the real word for it. We dress it up when we say player. Player sound cool. You know, player. You see what I'm saying? Player. You know what it is? It's a whoremonger. Mm. Yeah. And take the monger off of that. Take the monger off of that. Or even go deeper than that, take the W and the R or E off of that. Yeah, I said it. Listen to me. Why? Why, Pastor? Why? We've been dressing that up too long. That's how they're stirring us. To call bad good. And good bad. When a man faithful. When he with his wife all the time, ooh, y'all always together, y'all. You're just saying that because you want to get with him. Or you want to get with her. Oh, y'all always bite them like white on rice. <laughs> all right, well, 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 well. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I, where I was? Where I was? Whoremongers. I was talking about them, uh, hey, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters. But guess who else? All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. All liars. God not bringing that with him. God not bringing that with him. All those that currently and consistently operate in lies as a false witness, mm. you're going to have your place in the lake of fire. Why, Pastor? If you lie like that all the time with no conviction, it's a sign that you're not saved. And then you lie for nothing. You ever met somebody that lie for nothing? You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm not saying lie, no. But if you're going to lie, lie for something. You know what I'm saying? Lie what it means. Oh, now y'all going to be lying. No, listen. I'm saying don't lie. But even what's, what's even more appalling. It's people that just lie for nothing. Nobody even asks you that. <laughs> Nobody talking to you. You're not in trouble, ain't nothing on the line. You just, you just feel like telling a big whopper. You just, <laughs> guess what happened, y'all? Madison, guess what happened, girl? You know, what are you doing that for? You know what I'm saying? You got something on that prophetess. Oh, I can't say his name in here. Oh, all right. Yeah, that boy used to tell whoppers up in there. He'd be up in there lying to me and, and look, enjoying it himself. He'd be like, look, enjoying the story more than me. Man, I had a house, I had this, I had that. And I'm like, really? He's like, oh, yeah. God don't like that. Consistent liars show that you're not born again. You see, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And if your heart is born again and, and you got the Holy Spirit living inside of that, 
All right. Truth is going to come out of that. Because that spirit is the spirit of truth. You see, if lies are coming out of your, out of your heart, you got another spirit in that. And that's why God said, the liars, amen, you're not getting in that. Why? Because you ain't got the right spirit. You're not born again yet. You're not saved yet. You need to come to Christ. You see? You, some people think they're all right in here. But as a pastor, we like spiritual physicians. We can diagnose you because there's some symptoms that we are observing. From either your eye color, your skin, your tonsils when you go, ah, listen, listen, a lot of times you can tell how somebody feeling, how they doing spiritually by what, by what comes out of their mouth. Just, ah, ah. <laughs> Say, ah. Yeah. Ooh, I opened that thing too wide just now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you can tell, man. Man, that line ain't good for nobody, man. Line ain't good for nobody. You know? You know? And some of y'all, listen, y'all come from a family of liars. I'm telling the truth because I know it, all right? I know it. Oh, man, in our house, we used to lie to each other all the time. In fact, they still lie to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't, man, I'm, I'm not into that, man. I'm not into that, man. And my mom used to walk around where we'd be lying, man. She said she'd look at her lying to each other. She said, quite a story, Commander. That's what she said. You know what I'm saying? Because we'd just be lying. But she couldn't talk. She'd lie all the time, too. Where my mom at? All right. In fact, she still got some work to do. Wait, I'm, I'm, we say, man? Yeah, but y'all don't say nothing. You can't be doing that. That's a false witness, man. How many people come from a family of liars? Yeah, come on, Mel, raise it up high, Mel. We, you know what I'm saying? Karen, come on, y'all. Don't be shame raise that high. Not Miss Chantel. Look at Miss Chantel. Miss Chantel, listen. God know your people, you're good. That's what I, that, listen, that's what Isaiah said. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst a people with unclean lips. Listen, what we giving you today is going to set you apart. Amen. All right? It's going to set you apart. It's going to make you a city on a hill, Sean. Everybody lying out there, Sean. They really don't meet people that tell the truth no more. You know? You know? You got to take everything you hear with a grain of salt now. That's why we got so many lawyers and so many contracts and so many things. Let me tell you something, man. This paperwork for closing houses, ain't got, it used to be one page, duck. I'm doing closing now. They coming in there with, you know what I'm saying, with a cart. They putting that on the table. Man, what in the world? This thing would be over normally. Well. I'm, I know, I know, I know. It's too much paperwork, huh? That's what I'm saying. And they, and they do that because everybody lying. Come on, listen, I got to move. I got to move, I got to move, I got to move. Look, look, for the saint, we got to do things differently. For the Hebrews, we got to get back to who we are. We are people of truth that serve a God of truth. All right? And so in Colossians chapter 3, amen, the Bible tells us in verse 5 about the Christian, all right? If you say, if you got to work on this thing, all right? If it's something that's chronic in your life, you got to get saved, you know? But every now and then the world or even get on Christians where we start bending the truth a little bit. I feel it on myself. I'm not too proud to say that. You know what I'm saying? Listen, I don't want you to ever think that somehow I'm the Christ and I'm walking on water, you know? And so we could feel ourselves bending it a little bit. And we need a word like this just to straighten us up, just to get us back on it. Like, man, I need to watch what I say, man, that we leave a meeting saying, did I just say that? Or did she just think I meant that? And we don't clear it up. And it's like, and then I'm thinking about it all week. And I'm like, you know, man, just, man. 
You know what I'm saying? Wow, man. The one I want to clear something up with you doing. You asked me a question and you, I thought you meant and you thought I meant. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. And, and then when I then when I heard, I, I said, man, I said, I, I should. Why are they serving food right now? I just is that prayer. I better go eat. But I, you know, I should have come back and made that clip. Not that I was lying, though. No. But the meeting of the mind didn't happen. You see what I'm saying? She thought I was saying something. And it's about business. It's about, it ain't nothing like it. It's about business. Cole, you want me to tell him? I'm just joking. I'm just joking. You know what I'm saying? So, so, let's get back to her. You know what I'm saying? So, look what he said for the Christians. He said, mortify. That means to kill it. There's some things in us we need to kill. Right? That means that we don't take it hostage and hold it for a later date. We don't talk with it and play with it. We have some things in our lives, T. John, that we all need to kill. We don't play with it. We, we, when we see it, we, you know what I'm saying? We kill it. We can't have it around us, y'all. Look what he said. He said, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. This means mortify, kill the old you. You see, because you got members that's on earth, and then you got members that's in heaven. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, all right? But I, I'm still here, but I'm seated with him. So I got members on the earth, all right? Now listen to me good. We have to kill the old us. Paul said it like this. Paul said, I die daily. Meaning every time I wake up, I say, it's not going to be the old G money. It's going to be the new G money living today. It ain't going to be the old John. It's going to be the new John. It ain't going to be the old hill, the old the white, the old glory. It's not going to be that. I'm mortifying the old me. I am crucified with Christ. The old me ain't leaving this house. It's going to be the new me walking out of here. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Mortify. Woo! Somebody say mortify. Mortify. Therefore, your members upon the earth. Look, 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 look at the old members. Now he tell you modify the old you. Now he gonna get into some of the things that the old you used to do. And he gonna cover us in here. It, everything not gonna be you. But if you hear you, just say ouch. Some of y'all, the old you was fornication. Hey! That means engaging in acts with people of intimacy when you're not married to them. You see? He said, modify that. That's the old you. Stop sleeping with people you're not married to. Stop adultery. In that fornication is all sexual immorality. Stop homosexuality. Modify it. Kill it. Uncleanness. That's all impurity. All right? He put in cleanness or uncleanness in that because our young people sleep. Our young people slick. They hear me up here and they know the word so well. Some of them know the word better than their parents. So they say, well, I'm not fornicating. But they're doing everything else that lead up to it. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop right there. That word uncleanness, it means Impurity. Meaning that you could do things with a little boy and a little girl that don't fall into the category of fornication but still be sin. Do I have to explain it to you? Oh, what you say, babe? Okay, okay, I'm just saying. She really mean it when she said like this, when she go, no, no. Oh, God, no. Pastor, don't you dare. You're a Christian, kill that uncleanness. Inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, that's lust, kill it. Covetousness, greed, that's the old you, kill it. You don't operate in that. Idolatry, bending and bowing the statues, guess what? Kill that, don't play with that, don't go around that, kill it dead. For which things sake the wrath of God coming on the children of disobedience. You live like that, you play with that, the wrath of God gonna come on you. 
in the which ye also walked sometime when you lived in them. Verse 7 says, that's the way you used to be. You used to walk like that. You used to live like that. Verse 8, but now ye also put off these things. Stop them. Take that old man off. Put the new man on. When you leave the house, you got a decision to make who I'm going to put on. It's like a jacket. You know how you go in your closet and you say, I'm going to wear this or I'm going to wear that? Every day you walk out the house, I'm going to be the new me or I'm going to be the old me. Paul's saying, put on the new you. All right? He said, listen, anger, that's the old you. Blowing up, wrath, that's the old you. Malice, that's the old you. Blasphemy, that's the old you. Filthy communication, bad words, bad talk, that's the old you. Kill that, stop that. Verse 9, lie not to one another. Kill it, Christians, stop it. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. You don't live like that no more. You see? But how do I live, pastor? Verse 10, put on the new man. How does the new man look? He is renewed in knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Woo, the knowledge of the truth. Hey, be, be not conformed to the image of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. How does that look? What's the image of that? It's after the image of who? Of him that created you. You see? So, if I tell the truth, who do I look like? I look like God. Why? Because God is a God of truth. And if you're a child of the Most High God, you are going to look like, talk like, act like your father. And since God is a God of truth, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Then it means that the children of our triune God, hey God, they got to act like him. They got to talk like him. The Bible says about our father that God is not a man that he should lie. The Bible says about our father that it is impossible for God to lie. The Bible says that God is so truthful that heaven and earth going to pass away before his words pass away. The Bible says that God is so truthful that not one word that he has ever spoken, not one promise that he has ever given will ever fail. And if God is true like that, then his people got to be true like that. I'm winding down, I'm winding down, I'm winding down, I'm winding down. That's why we can't be false witnesses. That's why we got to tell the truth. Because God is a God of truth. Now, if you're lying a lot, this tells us that God is not your father. But that John 8, 44 says you have another father. John 8, 44 tells us, amen, you are of your father who? The devil. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, but that's not all. He was a liar also. And he abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. God is full of truth. There's no lie in him, no shadow of turning, amen. But the devil is full of lies. There is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, meaning that he owns lying. He has the patent on it. He was the first one to ever lie. And every time we lie, we got to borrow from his copyright. Hey, God, let me tell you, he is the father of lies, the Bible tells us. All right? All right? When you're lying, you're not acting like God. You're acting like the devil. One commentator says, when you got a lie on your tongue, it means you have a devil in your heart. When you have a lie on your tongue, it means you've got a devil in your heart. Let me put a scripture on that. That Acts 5, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie? You've got a lie on your tongue, you've got a devil in your heart. And the lying just going to be one manifestation. It's going to be some other things that you're doing. Lying just going to tell everybody. That you, you, yeah, you got a problem. You got a problem. You got other things going on. You got a problem. 
Somebody say, ah. You see? Well, this is what was happening with Stephen. He had liars coming up against him. False witnesses. People who was filled with Satan and not filled with God. Listen to me good. If you're here today and this word convicted you so bad, all right, I got a word for you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It means that God still loves you. It means that he's still talking to you. It means he still cares about you. You see, because when you stop hearing God and stop being convicted, it means that God done wrote you off. He done gave you over to a reprobate mind. That's what that means. But for those who can hear me in here and feel convicted by this word, it's a sign that God not done with you yet, that your best days are ahead of you. Amen. And it don't matter right now if you're doing what God hate. You got to understand. Hey, God, listen, God is so good. He really even loves the ones that he hates. He loves his enemies. You see what I'm saying? We all was in a situation where we was in a place where God hated what we was doing. And that's what it really is. It's not that he really hate us, but he hate the sins that we operate in. And all we got to do is stop doing what we was doing. And the relationship going to be mended. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. And I want to speak to you right now. Listen, from my heart. Not from a place of judgmentalism. Not from a place of better than. Listen, man, I'm nobody, man. I don't come from nothing, man. I come from a household where everything was going on in. You understand what I'm saying? Just like yours. I'm not better than you, you know? But God looked down, amen, and he convicted me one day. Kind of like you being convicted right now. And he showed me the error of my ways. And I didn't run from God. I was a man about my business. If he called me a liar, I would say, yes, God, I am a liar. He called me a drug dealer, yeah, I am that. I'm not going to be playing around, amen, trying to hide behind some religious facade. And so for us to be saved, we got to get real with God. We got to tell the Lord God, I got a problem with this stinky tongue. I got a problem with it. I got a real bad problem with it, but you're not alone. James said the tongue is set on fire from hell. Who can control and tame that tongue? You see, listen to me. Because we have a problem don't mean the doctor can't fix it, baby. We just got to come to him and say, Doc, I got a problem. Doc going to say what you've been going through. I got old lying tongue. I got old dirty mouth. I'm out here trying to get with every woman that I see. I, I'm out here and I'm drinking up every alcoholic beverage. I'm out here and I'm smoking everything that burns. I got, I got a problem and it's destroying me. We admit. Then we believe. We believe that though our sins are Red as scarlet, he'll wash them as white as snow. Though we are in a bad place, he still loves us and pursues us. He is after us with an unrelenting love. He will never stop chasing you until the moment you make him send you to hell. And then even then, he won't want to do it. God does not take pleasure in the death of the wicked. He tells us in his word, why die? Why? When my arms are outstretched daily, all day long I stretch my hands. 
the Spirit. The Spirit tells us, come. Come and believe. Come and receive that he loves you. He died for you on the cross of Calvary. He was buried in that grave. And on the third day he rose with all power and with all might. The Spirit says, come. Why die? Why die? If you're here and you've been convicted by this message and you have a question in your mind, do I have it all right with God? Do I have the spirit of truth living on the inside of me? Listen, we're going to pray at this altar, saints. And we're going to ask God to save and make your calling and election sure. But that's not the only people that need to be up here. We got some Christians who've been stirred into lying. You've been bending it, been breaking it, been talking like the devil instead of your God. And at this altar, there's going to be a, a group that's going to come and tell God they sorry and ask Abba to fix it. The Spirit done told me you already. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost. Come. 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 People of God, come. 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 People of God, come. Come. We could never fix a problem that we don't admit that we have. You know? Ain't nobody better than nobody up here. Thank you. Our natural tendency is when we get in a bind, our natural self-preservation tendency is to stretch the truth. Right? But we're going to ask God to fix it. We're going to ask Daddy to help us <laughs> so that we can get to a place where the psalmist says that we will tell the truth even to our own hurt. Let's pray, saints. Somebody say, Father God, Father God. Thank, you thank you for your truth. Thank you, Thank you for never lying, for never lying. To, me. to me. I admit, I admit. I've, sinned I've sinned against you. And I'm sorry. Forgive me, Forgive me. For, the for the sins of my mouth. Forgive me of the sins of my hands. Forgive me for the sins of my eyes. Forgive me for the sins of my thoughts. I believe, I believe that you are God, you are God. And, God and God alone. You died for my sins, died for my sins. On, Calvary. on Calvary. You were buried in the grave. In the grave. And on the third day, the you, rose you rose with all power, all power. with all might. All Lord, Lord, save me, save me. a sinner. And help, me and help me to always tell the truth. Give me a heart like yours. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some glory, saints. Woo!
May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you. And may he bless you with peace. With shalom. Peace. Prosperity. Favor. Woo, health. Healing. Everything that's good. Anything that you need. Woo, I pray that daddy bless you with it. You've been favored by the most high. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give him glory, saints. Love y'all so much. Love y'all so much. Hallelujah. Y'all have a blessed Sunday. In Jesus' name. You clear, you clear, you clear. Bless you all with a God. Bless you. Sean White. What's up, Lynn?